Fleurs at a coffee and cake celebration, the Fleurs birthday. Fleur, the former vicar of St. Peter's Garden. I don't know how many people like to know about this event, but I suspected that my former music teacher from school would be there. And this was the case. When he saw me, he said, I taught you a fault. To which I smiled and said, John, think how many years ago that was. I am the daughter. And we laughed together as we remembered how long ago it actually was since he'd last seen me and taught me. And we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves talking about the visit to Spain when we went to watch Real Madrid play at the Bernabeu. The school musicals, singing in the international high step, and swapping notes about who we were both still in touch with. Now, a picture should come up on the screen, and uh, that picture is to represent like parent, like child, wearing the same football shirt and supporting the same team through the generations. Was I offended when John mistook me for my mum? Definitely not. There is a passing resemblance, and humanly speaking, I can't think of anyone I prefer to be alive, while still being a person in my own mind. I wouldn't want to be thought of as the new Thomas Brooks. Yet, how often do others try to do that with people? In Preston, any player who can dribble for 10 seconds is dubbed the new Tom Finney. And Blackburn supporters are still craving after the new Alan Shearer. Pictures of these gentlemen are now on the screen. And in politics, people try to further their ambitions by aligning themselves to political heroes of the past. I've tried to be quite careful in my choice here and have selected Ramsey MacDonald and Winston Churchill. For those politicians, it's a bit of an imitation game, pretending to be something which they are. But there is someone we should all be looking to imitate, Jesus. And it should be a surface pretense, but as part of true transformation or sanctification. Now we regularly ask for this to take place as we sing our worship. In love divine come the words, change from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place whilst we shine jesus shine that last hymn for the start of our service we see ever changing from glory to glory mirrored here may our lives tell more story and this is about what's happening now to us on earth the saints in glory are talked about as such because of the way they behave on earth. They were saints on earth as they pursued God's kingdom way. The reading from Luke gives a, a starting point of basic do's and don'ts related to the vision of God's word going forward. I'd be absolutely appalled if anyone tried to use this reading to say that it's virtuous to be hungry or marginalised. Yet I'm sure that in the past and somewhere today that is happening. But that is not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying that if injustice is reigning, that the world needs to be turned upside down so that God's kingdom and justice 
can reign instead. And in this message is the encouragement for God's saints here on earth to remain faithful to him no matter what the world throws at us. And that's the theme picked up in St. Paul's prayer for the Ephesians. He gives thanks for their faithfulness and asks that the Holy Spirit helps them to know even more of God. This is through a deepening relationship and not head knowledge and the involved use of the precious gift of wisdom. We have access as Christians to the same mighty God that St. Paul is talking about, who raised Jesus from the dead and who rules over all. It saints here on earth. It's us saints here on earth that we need to hear God's call and follow Him. We need to be hearing His warnings for the world and grasping His promises. Important, I think we need to respond to the task that He's calling us to do. Finally, we all need the Holy Spirit to be working in us so that we can all 